Yeah, just got a question, Bobby. Uh, Whirlpool ice maker, making yeah. ice, but the dispenser will not work. So I've done a little research. So I'm 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 thinking it could be the little micro switch, or it's not getting power. Or uh, so, side by side or or French door. Uh, side by side, yeah. Side by side, yeah. Is it is it that one with a single toggle switch right there that goes, you know, like you have to go all the way up to get ice and then down below to do water? I think it's got it's it's got uh, uh it's a whirlpool. Uh, it starts with an ED. Uh, I think it's got one for water and one for ice because she's getting separate water. toggles. Like, yeah. Yeah, the easiest thing to do on those, and then some of those have been. Have you looked at that harness down at the door cam? Yes, I've looked at it. Yeah, some of those break right there on that on that harness. They're kind of notorious for that. Okay. I was just one that I had never tackled one, but you know, kind of get a little insight. Right. I sure appreciate it. Not always. Cool. Um, well, this this might be a this might be a short call. It depends. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, just welcome. I want to welcome Scott and C in um, to the call. Um, and looks, I want to say they're newer faces. Um, and this is our weekly um, appliance repair roundtable call on Zoom. Uh, we hold these every Sunday at this time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And um, I, I am host and moderator. My name is Alex Tiberi. Um, I work with folks like you guys. I just started working with Bobby officially last night, helping with uh, online lead generation and whatnot. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, Scott, I see that you got your video working. Um, did you want to unmute yourself, introduce yourself to the group, and we can do a little bit of intros before we jump into stuff? Hey, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. I'm Scott, Lake Appliance Repair. Uh, out here in uh, Sacramento right now, 110 degrees, just trying to stay cool. Cool, cool. <laughs> well, not cool. Um, I think that no matter where we are in the country, I think that most all of us are experiencing some heat. But um, uh, what, uh, so, so Scott, what, do you have any, like, anything that you're kind of getting challenged with right now? Any wins that you might wanna share with the group? I, I, I like to ask this at the beginning of each call just to try to, um, you know, because these calls are just as good as what we bring to them. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, anything on your mind or anything that you've been working on with your business? Um, well, mainly morale for us, um, being as busy as everybody is right now, and the the volume of of calls that are coming for, and I think I think most of us are experiencing it. We're just it's just crazy busy and customers are at home they're using their appliances they're cooking more than ever things are things are breaking down so i'm just trying to keep the guys from 
going nuts out there um, and, and, you know, keeping the morale up. We've, uh, we've shut our office down um, for a second time. We shut it down. Well, when I say shut down, I mean, we sent everybody home. They took their computers, their phones, everybody went home to work. So, so that puts a lot more pressure on, you know, everybody's home situation is not fantastic to work out of. I know I've got two young kids. So working from a home office is just a nightmare some days. Um, so yeah, just trying to keep everyone's morale up and, and uh, support them as best as I can. That's, that's my challenge right now. But, you know, I, I don't run service calls anymore. I've been out of the field for a while. So, uh, you know, I kind of just plug myself in where I'm needed and, and try and keep everybody uh, – Get a, get everybody everything they need and keep them all sane. That's yeah. That's the right now. Like, what's the? I mean, have you figured out the balance? Like, what is your approach for trying to keep the morale up? Um, well, <laughs> you know, it's an individual thing. Everybody needs um, individuality. Everybody needs their story heard. Everybody's uh, you know, got unique situations in their personal lives. So as far as a company standpoint, you know, we do a lot of stuff now. We're just doing a lot of, you know, Zoom videos that, or, you know, we, we, we have a Facebook page that is a closed group for our company only. And we ask people to post videos of themselves singing or at work or just, you know, random stuff, TikToks. Uh, a lot of the younger people are into TikToks. So we say, you know, make a TikTok about, your day at work and share it with us. So that, that sort of stuff. Um, as far as the guys go in the field, it's just like basically making sure that they're not overworked and getting burned out. You know, appliance techs are a special breed. Me being one of them, I like to start at eight o'clock, seven thirty, eight o'clock. I like to be home by four, you know, and anything that, that, that stops that or hinders that, puts me home at six or seven o'clock at night starts to weigh on me. So I, I, I make sure that these guys get their routes are very polished throughout the day. And then that puts added pressure on the staff in the office because they're not doing nothing but rescheduling sometimes. And then that, that person gets yelled at all day long by the tech and by the office, uh, by the customer, you know, so that's just a, a job that get, you just get beat down. Um, so yeah, just supporting them, making sure that they have, we have their back and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, customers have to understand what situation we're in right now. And, uh, you know, a, a no call refrigerator is very important. We've, we started prioritizing jobs and putting a kind of a priority level on it and build a script that says, Hey, you know, when a low priority job, such as a you know, let's say a, a standalone ice machine or maybe a, a dishwasher comes on schedule. If something doesn't fit, that's the that's the one that's got to go. You know, people can't do without refrigeration or laundry and cooking, but they can do without some things. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. Keep everyone happy and wanting to come to work, especially with all the uh, government money that's out there nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely some crazy times. It sounds like it sounds like you have a pretty good handle on things. Um, I wanted to point out, and just so you know, Scott, these calls are recorded, and I share them with the group. So um, it's uh, sometimes there are people that aren't here that are still listening in and kind of getting some good value. And there was one thing that I heard from you, um, which is prioritization. You know, I know I've talked to some companies where they will, for example prioritize when a part needs to be ordered and there needs to be like a return uh, trip scheduled for repair. And um, that makes a lot of sense how you're prioritizing certain appliance types right now with uh, the level of overwhelm, just which as you pointed out, a lot of um, companies are experiencing. Um, can you give us a little context? Like what's the size of Lake Appliance and about how far are you guys scheduling out right now? take my mute off um so we're 
we we just have some major metro markets that we're we're open in. Um, Sacramento is really where where I started, and Sacramento we have a, a fairly big operation, about 20, 25 trucks, you know, get, servicing the greater Sacramento area, a little bit down into the East Bay, San Francisco, and all the way up to Truckee and South Lake Tahoe. Um, we have about 10 guys in Reno, Nevada at the moment. Um, we have a small, we have a couple of guys in, in Boise, Idaho that were Boise natives. They moved back there uh, to be with, you know, closer to family. So that's a very small operation. And we, we, my brother-in-law, you probably know Alex Freelove, he, he moved over to Maui. So he's opened up the Hawaii operation and um, he pretty much runs that thing standalone. We don't really have too much to do with that. And he's, he's hired a few guys over there and one in, uh, on Big Island and a couple of people over in Oahu. So he's, he's doing his own thing over there, um, just kind of with our support. So that's kind of our, our scope of things. That's great. No, that's great. Sounds like you've uh, definitely put uh, put together a pretty good operation. How how old is the business? Um, started about two thousand four. Uh, okay. Started finances and went through a couple of changes, a couple of you know failed starts and and issues that you know as a young businessman I wasn't expecting taxes and that sort of thing so yeah started about 2004 okay yeah so if my math is correct in about 16 years you've put sounds like over 30 trucks on the road in various markets yeah um i think we're up we're up over the 50 truck mark now across across the five states um you know it fluctuates obviously weekly but yeah, it's, we built the company really as a, a retail manufacturer. So it's, you know, it's, it's very low profit margin, as you guys know, supporting a manufacturer is, is difficult. And the retailers are very demanding. So you kind of have to have patience there. Uh, what and last question for you and thank you for all this info I think it's helpful to everyone um, to kind of understand the scope um, a lot of people that attend these calls or a, 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 an amount of people that attend these calls are kind of on the other end of the spectrum where they're like single single man one tech companies um, are starting out and that kind of stuff about what percentage of your business are COD calls uh, right now it's pretty I mean it's it's not. It's it's about forty percent right now. My wife has much more accuracy on numbers on a weekly basis. She analyzes it, but you know we we've we've signed contracts with manufacturers and and we've made commitments to retailers. So we hold our support to those contracts pretty tightly, and often that means turning away a collect customer, which is obviously that's the last. We want to do last thing any of us want to do but you know i my kind of word is my bond if i say i'm going to help you i'll help you and uh when when we have to shut down the collect calls and just uh you know shut down advertising we shut it down when our schedule becomes overwhelmed we're we're pr probably booked out four or five days right now uh with with mostly full schedules so it's it's kind of tough if somebody calls up and says, hey. So are you prioritizing warranty work over collect calls? We would, yeah. If provide, you know, or we have some pretty good relationships. So I would never yeah, want to. And your rates, your rates on your warranty works only like what, one hundred and fifteen, hundred and twenty dollars, even if it's Bosch or, or LG. Yeah, about that. A lot of my guys collect service charge. You know, when when you just collect, 
and adopting the profit margin. <laughs> You know how much you pay for a lead. For us, it's somewhere between 25 and sometimes up to $40 a lead. Uh, that warranty call becomes a little more profitable than the collect call. And, you know, the only thing is it's you're in and out of the house and the customer's saying, no, thanks, I'm going shopping. Um, with the warranty ticket, you're going and you're having to bill it and collect it. So, um, uh, welcome, Rochelle. Welcome to the call. How's everything going with you? Looks like you're still in your truck. And, and muted. So, I can't tell if you're chatting with us, Rochelle, but we can't hear you. Um, hey, what's up, Alex? How's it going? How's, uh, how's the week been for you? Man, it's crazy. I was just on a call with an LG. I had a client that uh, they had misdiagnosed the ice maker, people switching out ice makers, and the issue was with her, um, the ice maker fan, the one underneath. She had the French door LG, so I took care of that. Okay. Yeah. Freezer, freezer fan built up uh, with uh, frost and that. Yeah. Yeah, so what I did was I sold her the fan, including the entire, you know how they sell it with the uh, plastic cover that comes with the evaporator fan ice, and the control board. So they recommend you do all of them, the, at least the ice maker and the control board. And since they offered the assembly, I gave it an option with just the ice maker and the control board or the ice maker and the whole assembly. LG actually makes an assembly with that entire plastic Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just gotta watch the connector to make sure it's it's uh, the right one. Mm -hmm. yeah. They love they love this to switch that up for, for no reason. There is absolutely no reason to switch right. that connector, but they love to do it. I appreciate the heads up. I'll be looking for that, sir. I'm telling you, that's like my seventh call today. I had seven calls today on a Sunday. Right. Oh, she's cake. Oh, do you get the chocolate? Yeah. Okay. Did you not want to get a uh, raspberry something? Uh, no, 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 perfect. Oh, okay. yeah, we're good, so I, I'm just going to mute Bobby. Uh, if you guys haven't figured it out, Bobby is joining us from dinner uh, tonight. But um, so, so I, I wanted to just kind of like uh, reflect on something that Scott that came out of what Scott was sharing. Um, and just to give you some context, Rochelle. So Scott has a uh, company, Lake Appliance. And um, it's in the last 16 years from when he started the company, he's now up at like 50 plus trucks. And awesome. um, I want to say they're in four states. Uh, it was Scott, it may be more than four, but they're, 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 it's, a, it's a pretty sizable company um, compared to kind of the other side of the spectrum. Um, and the, the majority of the, um, the work are like uh, retail and manufacturer support. So warranty work, um, contract based and um, you know Bobby was asking about or I think Bobby was kind of pointing out sort of the difference in we'll call it profit margin um, but at the same time it's like I guess that the point I'm trying to illustrate is it's like this balancing act where there's something that is more uh, secure in a certain way more dependable you can plan around it through contracts Scott, what is the average time frame on one of your guys' contracts? Um, you mean how often do we negotiate them? Uh, yeah. So if you were to get into contract with a retailer, I mean, is this like a year, multi-year? It's, it's a one-year contract, but, but the ones with the retailers, for me, are more of a handshake deal where we say, hey, we'll support you send us what you have we're aligned with these five manufacturers uh, when, you, when you say retailers are you talking about like um you're doing low service contracts and um uh, new uh, aig you know things along those lines yeah all of you ahs whirlpool we're a very very heavy whirlpool warranty company so um they have various different contracts within their uh, individual contract. Um, 
so most of them we'll we'll align with and then you know each year we renegotiate the contract and um you know at any given time if things aren't working for either party then we normally have a pretty open line of communication i i make sure that you know we support them you know they, they have they have these calls that are random off the grid calls we have to go do those we lose a little bit of money on some calls we make a little bit of money on most calls so it's kind of a good balance but um it is a lot of it's a lot of uh Sorry, I hate to keep chiming in, but I got one more question. Are you, now, are you, the main reason that you're actually going after all these warranty claims though, is just because of the call volume in the fast 50 trucks. I mean, to be DOG work on 50 trucks, I mean, you talking thousand dollar, you know, weeks. I think we might be getting a little bit of choppy reception from you, Bobby. Yeah, my phone couldn't make most of that out. Um, it looks like Bobby's going to type it into chat and I'll relay it. But either way, the I guess the, the perspective that I was trying to illustrate is there's this concept of like high risk, high reward, lower risk, low reward is one way of saying it. Um, you know, as Scott had mentioned, lower profit margins um, on the warranty work, but at the same time, it's a little bit more, I don't want to say volatile, but it's a little bit more dynamic with the ecosystem around COD um, with, you know, lead generation, the cost per lead, there isn't always a, it's not always a sure thing. So, um, you know, it's just no matter where somebody's at in their business, um, it, there's always like certain pros and certain cons and certain compromises. And it's, it's, it's important to think through that kind of stuff and, um, uh, you know, find the right balance. Um, why I'm curious. Um, so I'm curious to hear from you, Mark on, uh, you know, uh, Scott had mentioned, uh, one of the things he's focusing, he's focusing on right now is like managing the overwhelm sense with his staff. Um, and Mark, I know that you had mentioned before we hit record that you're scheduled out about a week right now, which is like outside of your comfort zone. Um, you know, you want to get your, get some texts coming, but right now you're just the only one um, doing repairs. Like Mark, what's your trick to that feeling of overwhelm? How are you managing it? And what, I mean, what tips do you think somebody else might be able to glean from you? And it seems like the internet tonight is a little choppy. Um, I think Mark might be frozen on us. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, relay what Bobby was saying. Um, so Bobby was typing that having, uh, with having 50 trucks that he understands why you have to push the call volume and the importance of warranty work. Um, that he's coming from a company that he's come from a company like that prior. And, um, and it's a fight with all of the techs for improving the completion rates and first day completes and making that warranty rate work for um, kind of, I think that gets the gist across. Is that, that's me, Alex? I think that I was just relaying um, what Bobby was saying. Um, uh, yeah, that's it's it's not for everyone. It's not for most people. It 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 it's a pain in the butt to be honest. On most days, you're dealing with so many personalities and managers, and then you're dealing with manufacturers and their reps and their demands, and all of this other stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, you look at it and say, "Geez, when I was four trucks." and I was doing 90% collect business, I was making a similar amount of money with, with zero headache. But, um, you know, I've just got my wife to thank for that. She loves this stuff and she runs the business every day and she's, she's a go-getter. She's got plenty of energy. And so, um, you know, I've got my place in the company, she's got hers and we've got um, four really good 
managers in place that really care about people and care about the business and the industry in general. And without those people, I wouldn't do it. I'd shut it down. You know, I just, I'm not looking for that headache on a daily basis. So yeah, I get it. I, you know, I've seen some collect businesses with 10 trucks and I think, wow, Lake Appliance could be a 10 truck collect company only. And I would have then 12 or 15 people to manage and it would be easier. So I see both sides of it, but this is the path that we've chosen and that's where we're at. So great. Yeah. Well, thank you again for sharing. Um, Hey, Mark, did you want to, maybe we can try if your connection's strong enough. Every um, time you ask a question, my, I, mine goes dead. So I can't see nothing. But you're, you're a little cube in the bottom of my screen. What you got? Okay. Well, Scott was talking about um, how he's trying to manage overwhelm with his staff and all the demand. And I know that you have a lot of demand in your business right now. And I was just wondering how you're tackling that um, feeling of overwhelm. No, like I said, prioritizing. You know, I'm, I'm telling some customers, you know, with ice makers or whatnot, you know, if they can wait a week or two, I'm in a, you know, busy time. And most of my customers are repeat. So they kind of know. And I even have on my answering machine, you know, that we're, you know, dealing with an overwhelming amount of calls. We're scheduling out a few days. And if they're willing to wait, leave a message. And, you know, they're willing to wait, but it ain't easy, you know. And, you know, like some of the, like, I don't take every call that comes in. There's like, I'll get Samsung, LG, certain ice makers. I'll just tell them to call somebody else. And if I got to get rid of what I'm, what I don't like to work on, I'd rather work on what I can make money and, you know, get a first call complete. Mm -hmm. Great. And, you know, there comes, I hear from you, prioritization. You know, that's something that Scott was bringing up. Um, something I had mentioned from a, a separate conversation with a different company. You know, it's, it's important for uh, business owners and managers of any size to um, be able to kind of pivot and shift up and prioritize, um, especially, you know, uh, especially when times are booming right now. And then also particularly when times are dry, when times are dry, you need to, you know, identify the places to be prioritizing your energy. Um, hey, Rochelle, I, I can see that you're driving. I, I don't know if you're up for it, but um, like, I think that you might have something to say about prioritization. Like how are yeah. things looking for your business right now? And, and, and how are you prioritizing? Well, you know, like Saturday, I kind of took a break. It really wasn't a break. I kind of put myself in a situation with a customer because on a rare occasion, I actually showed that I had a heart, and I try to keep that under wraps. I had a customer that needed a washing machine, and I had another customer that kind of gave me one, and I kind of spent all day, you know, looking at this washing machine because I'm going to give it to this lady, but I'm such a damn perfectionist, you know. I got to make sure it's perfect. So I hate washing machines. That's a shout-out to Mark has. Um <laughs> But my business is actually going great. Right now, you know I'm all about profit, man. <laughs> Period. So my priority is is where my profit is. You know, and so you know I'm a man guess what though? Guess what I've been getting calls on that's gonna blow everybody's mind. What's up? Four calls out of Miami to repair Roombas. Some little robot vacuums. That people spend, like the I-7 and I-9, they spend all this damn money, and then they're, like, attached to it like it's a pet. And you go and tell them it's going to be fine, and they don't care. I'm like, oh, my God. So don't sleep on the room. But, uh, my business is going well. <clears throat> I'm trying to, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to develop a personal life, but that's a different conversation. But, <laughs> um um, it's really going well right now for me. I'm just always looking at where the, the profit is. You know, like I was listening to Bobby when he was talking about the dryers and turning it quick. I keep telling y'all I'm going to put up a, a site called dryfix.com today and stock uh, LG uh, heating elements and Samsung and just specialize in that. Just tell everybody else to go to hell. Corner the market. 
But uh, everything's going well for me, you know. It's, it's, just to chime in on that one, if you're not stocking, you know, at least seven or eight different types of heating elements, um, yeah, you're not working on enough dryers to stock those things. Yeah. That's day, those are day one completes and easy 225, 275 on every single one. Dude, you, hey, y'all too cheap up there, bro. You know where I'm at. I was <laughs> run 350 to 450, son. Come down here and get a suntan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But actually, we were, just, we were down there a while ago. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to mute myself back on. Uh, you cut out a little bit, Scott. What was that? What 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 do you ever find wrong, wrong with the Roomba? I just bought one of those a couple months ago. Uh, yeah, it was just a couple of issues with the uh, dock. The charging, they have an issue with the clips on the charges. Sometimes they uh, fail. So all you do is order the part for fifteen, twenty dollars, you know, and then like a maintenance thing on it and hit them in the head, like you know, four, easy. You know, my favorite number is five hundred, but that's another conversation. Alex will fill you in on that. I'm a sister, man. So y'all know hustle is in my blood all day. All right, Alex, you're on. Be you're on deck. You got to fill us in on that last statement. I actually, I actually need Rochelle to refresh my memory. Um, what were you referring to, Rochelle? Such a European American response. That's why I love you, boys. All right, but uh, <laughs> no, you know, like, like anything else. Like for instance, I got schooled by one of my guys, one of the Quentin over at Empire, because I was pricing out a job on a built-in kitchen aid, right? And the deal down south here in Miami and, and Florida, South Florida, is there's no customer service. So these idiots don't pick up the phone. They don't take care of customers. It's just pathetic. So you can be the knight in shining armor and charge your arm and a leg, and they love you. So like I had this built-in uh, KitchenAid compressor, parts and labor. Um, you know, I charge the lady like 2200 My guys is like, you're supposed to charge 35 I'm like, no, dude. So the compressor cost me two fifty. My subcontract is gonna do the job for four hundred. So I, how much did I just clip people? But bang. That's just it's it's the way of life. You gotta be able to sell, but you gotta be able to provide the service. Like my subcontract is top notch, the ones that I use on certain jobs because of the clientele. And I you already know my MO, Alex. If the if the per capita income <laughs> So you're giving your subcontractors You're giving your subcontractors four hundred dollars to do a compressor install? No, no, no. This is on a built in. That's on a built in. On the LGs I pay them two twenty, two fifty. And I sell the LG jobs down here for eleven hundred to thirteen hundred. It's not too far off. Yeah, you know, we usually do them for about eight fifty, nine fifty. Yeah, because y'all, I'm telling you, man, it's the cost of living. We on the beach; they gotta pay. It is what it is. So, and Michelle, I was hearing from you. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and for those that don't know, Rochelle, um, she caters to like uh, a higher income uh, target audience in clientele. Um, and Rochelle, you were talking about how you're prioritizing profit first, as you put it. So are those, uh -huh. do you have those whittled down to specific appliance types or is it more on like a case by case yeah, basis? Uh, I, look. Don't call me, hey, do not call me if you have an amount. I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> I can't. I'm just saying. But the bottom line, it comes from my automotive background. In automotive, I only dealt with Mercedes, BMW, Porsche, my, that type of stuff. So that clientele I'm already corporately trained for. So I know their habits. I know how they want to be talked to. I know how we have to show up. I know that whole, it's a different mindset. They want you to come in a certain way with appliance, blankets, shoe covers. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Would you like for me to enter through the garage or around? You know, it's a whole different clientele. And 
they are paying you to feel comfortable in their own space. Because the key is the market sucks here. There are not people that provide white glove service. So that is what they're paying for is the premium experience. And the fact that is that I'm, you know, trustworthy. Like I'm not going to be throwing no, like prime example. I could have easily hit this lady in the head that I just left. Oh, you need an ice cream. But what did I do? I pulled the, I explained to her, I said, ma'am, I got to pull the LG out. I'm going to have to pull the panel in the back. I'm going to have to do some testing. Got to run through, you know, because there's no air coming out of this particular vent that feeds your ice maker. If you explain, it's just like when I work in automotive, I can sell anything because I can break it down in layman's terms. But that's a special skill set that I am, you know, that I'm profiting off of. I mean, like, for example, you ask Bobby, ask Bobby what do you think I sold that job I just left for? I sell my jobs totally different. That job with the uh, ice, with the whole cover, the grill, and the uh, the control board parts and labor, I sold that job for nine hundred dollars. <laughs> I would have done four fifty, five twenty-five, depending on uh, parts. Yeah, but remember, I sold the whole grill. I didn't just sell the little ice uh, fan. So I built back, but I gave it an option of doing just the ice fan or the whole assembly. And it was roughly about a yeah. two, three difference. But like I said, I sold it because I'm not, another thing is I don't believe in coming back. I'm going to hit everything because I'm not going back. I don't believe in recalls and come back. You know, I'm not living that I hear you. Um, Bobby, it looks like it looks like you're leaving the restaurant. Um, are you good to talk a little? I thought that maybe this would be a good time for us to to share our little project. Yeah, with, uh, with uh, thank right. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm. We're getting ready to leave right now. We're walking out of the hotel, but um, once we hit outside, uh, I switch over to the Wi-Fi to my data plan. So you know, give me a second and a half here. Sure. So I'll, um, I'll intro it a little bit. So, so Bobby is, um, and I'll let him kind of speak for himself once he gets switched over, but Bobby's switching things up a little bit and he is uh, starting his own uh, company. He was a uh, partner um, in a, an appliance repair company and he's now um, going to be the sole owner of, um, of a new appliance company, appliance repair company. And um, we thought that this was going to be a, a fun opportunity to document the process. Um, so I'm going to be helping him out from like the online marketing side of things. Um, Bobby has uh, years of, uh, of knowledge and experience from the uh, technician um, and repair side of things. And um, we're going to be documenting things and see if we can pull this off and maybe 30 days, you know, maybe 60 days, but the concept is um, starting an appliance repair company from scratch. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. Um, Bobby, are you still uh, switching over? Or? Well, it looks like he's still working on his end, um, but uh, but yeah, we met last night and we got the process started with purchasing a domain, setting up hosting, um, and he's been working on um, incorporation um, in the state of Missouri. Uh, can you hear me, Bobby? Well, who knows? Maybe this little news uh, news yeah, flash maybe short lived. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You want to uh, you want to share with uh, folks uh, kind of how things have been changing for you a little bit. Yeah, give me one second. I'm on this way. So, um, so can I'm you hear me? Okay. Uh, so far, yeah, so far.
you know, Bobby, I think that your I think that your reception might be a little too shoddy right now. Uh, your Wi-Fi network. You want to put it in? Congratulations, man. That's an awesome move, man. I can't wait to watch this. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to speak for him, um, mm -hmm. but uh, it's. Uh, uh, now it's my time to speak. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Oh, good. All right. Um, so yeah, I was. There was me and two other partners. Um, we were part owners of uh, Capitan Appliance when um, when I moved to Missouri. The Indiana, you know, like um, uh, your your federal employment uh, identification number uh, for Missouri, we'd have to do foreign business um, for the the different area. And according to the CPA, the taxes, the insurance, the umbrella, um, the, the liability insurance, uh, um, everything has to be completely different uh, when you do when you doing business in a different state. So um, long and short, um, the other two partners decided on their own time that they were going to change it up and make it to where uh, I was no longer going to be a partner. So as of yesterday, I went and got a, uh, a different, uh, no. so as of yesterday, I got the, uh, uh, change of a, a password on the bank accounts and everything else was shutting down. When I called up to talk with them about it, they just, you know, pretty much informed me, yeah, you know, this is what we're doing. You know, it's how, you know, we talked about it and I'm like, well, you know, we didn't talk. I was kind of left in the dark on it. So long and short, they bought me out of my partnership and uh, I launched up immediately with uh, Alex and we went, uh, you know, gung ho on this idea. Well, congratulations, so man. That's the move, man. Congratulations. I am looking forward to watching this. May the fireworks fly. Go get it, boy. <laughs> oh no, no. Thirty days is, is all is all we'll need to be able to get the ball rolling and moving. But um the fact that we can establish this from a zero point margin, it really hasn't been documented before. You know, I mean, how can you take a business from nothing and especially in this industry? and document, you know, the 30 day, you know, marker of it. So Bobby, what um, you want to share with people the, uh, the name of your new business? Um, it's going to be Pace Appliance Repair. Um, I'm a firm believer that, you know, it's like a, we're going to set the pace for everybody else. Uh, I just like the name. I think it's catchy. But the other portion of it is, is the um, it's P.A.C.E. And it stands for Professional Appliance Care Experts. So it's kind of like a multi reason for the name behind it. And uh, I, I like it. I, I think it's nice. But um, the, the website is going to be uh, pace appliancerepair.com. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, anxiety, and uh, nervous at the same time. But I'm. Um, I'm more excited than I am, you know, nervous or scared. Yeah, I, it's not a matter of, you know, uh, if, but when, you know, uh, we get this ball rolling and, and how fast we move it. Yeah, so I'll um, I'll add some context. And so Bobby is going to be, unless Bobby, you're changing, but I want to say Bobby's business is um, going to be 100% COD work. Um, and based out of the uh, uh, Missouri, uh, right now the service area is St. Charles and the western um, end of St. Louis. Um, so yesterday is when we started, or when he started. Um, so August 15th, uh, we purchased the domain name last night, got hosting set up, um, got his business email set up. Um, I have my team uh, starting today working on building out a one-page website that we're um, looking to get launched live within the next couple of days. Um, so our goal right now is by the middle of this week, we will be um, running lead generation efforts. So 
Um, I will be running in Google ads, so Google advertising, um, and then Bobby will be uh, running uh, Facebook advertising. Um, we will have the Google My Business listing um, also um, uh, submitted midweek. Um, with their uh, verification turnaround times, we hope to have the yeah, GMB listing uh, verified Maybe by time. ideally um, oh. next week. If you want. And then um, the lines. idea is to grow the business, to kickstart the business with uh, paid advertising. Um, Bobby's really good. He has a really good process um, and method for uh, requesting reviews from customers. And um, so it'll be real interesting to see how things go over the next 30 days. Um, you know, everything's going to be nice and transparent. Um, we are like having pretty regular kind of Zoom work sessions that I'm recording and then I'm editing the videos uh, to kind of document all this on video. Um, you know, I, I haven't asked him directly but i think that we're on the same page uh, we're going to be pulling back the cover um everything all the decisions that he's making the numbers um investments revenue you know we'll have uh, kind of income reports to share and um our goal is for this to be uh a um you know something that can really help some folks understand what it takes to uh to kick off a new business and um you know, I bring the marketing experience. He brings the uh, the appliance repair experience, and um, and yeah, we think it's going to be a fun little endeavor to share with the uh, share with the world. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I totally you want to add, Bobby. Hundred percent. Make sure I'm on. Uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, uh, I totally agree with it. We're going to run um, 30, 30 days. You know, completely transparent. You know, all numbers will be uh, available. Um, the concept uh, behind it is going to be, you know, how we can go from, uh, you know, is day day one, day day seven, day fourteen. You know, what the progress is. You know, what the investments are, what the turnarounds are, um, how many five star reviews we can we can gather inside of the first thirty day mark. Um, you know, what we're doing to gather those five stars basically what it takes to build um, a successful appliance repair company inside of 30 days. Yep. Cool. Well, um, yeah, yeah. just all kind of came together uh, yesterday. I came off the trail with my wife and got a text from Bobby at like 2 PM my time. So, um, it'll be fun. Hope you guys enjoy the, uh, enjoy the ride with us, but, um, but yeah, either way, let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you guys for attending a little bit smaller attendance this week, but I think that, um, you know, we got some good stuff out there. Um, thank you, Scott, for, um, sharing. I know you're at dinner, so don't feel like you need to unmute or anything, Scott, but, um, you know, thanks for sharing a little bit about Lake Appliance and, uh, Mark, I hope that, uh, you're able to kind of chip back from that one week lead time if, if possible, or at least, uh, keep your head on straight while it's going on. And, um, and yeah, we'll be back this time next week. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your, your Sunday night and a great start to your, to your weeks. Um, I'll see you guys again in a week. Take care. All right. Thanks, Alex. Have a good one. Yeah, likewise. Take care.